Hello, I'm Cindy Lilly. Today we'll be exploring Nearpod. It is a web app that can be used to increase student ownership, creativity, collaboration with peer-to-peers, increase your targeted instruction, and increase the use of digital tools and content in your classroom. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right-hand corner. Here's how to get started with Nearpod. Hi, teachers. This is going to be a video uh, more based around like a student tutorial for how to use Nearpod to make their like Google Slides projects uh, more engaging. But kind of the idea behind why to do this, why to have students use Nearpod besides just making their projects cooler is also because um, we got some insight from the students uh, from a survey that they were given. Basically, students surveyed from Horry County said that 53% of them uh, never get to share anything that they make with their peers. So they're making all these cool projects and they don't actually get to show anyone. Uh, 66% of them would like a partner to help them understand things that they're having trouble with. 83% of students are only using Google Slides. So basically, we took this information and we decided, okay, well, we need to give them another option besides Google Slides, but that is also as easy as Google Slides. And then we also want these students to take what they've learned and share that with other students who may be struggling to learn that same thing. So a student can go in and essentially take a Google Slides project they've made or make a new Nearpod completely. They can add engaging activities into it and they can basically lead a peer study group with that Nearpod or with that Google Slides. So that's the idea behind this uh, tutorial. So if you fast forward um, to just right after this section, it will be more geared to the students and uh, a Nearpod walkthrough for the students. All right, thank you. Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. Um, and thanks for joining us when we're gonna talk about Nearpod. But before we get started, I have three questions for you. The first question is, has your teacher ever taught you something over and over again and you still don't get it? Or other side of the coin, has she taught you something and you thought, Wow, I could explain that to my peers much better. Or finally, are you tired of the same old presentations over and over again? Well, if you can say yes to any of those, you're in the right place. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk to you about how you can make a Nearpod presentation. Nearpod is this amazingly cool a uh, way to make a presentation that's interactive and engaging and has lots of cool things you can put into it. No cap. Um, so it also gives you a great opportunity to take control of your learning. So let's get started. All right. So you're going to start out by going to nearpod.com. Usually you guys are probably used to going to students and typing in a code. We're actually not going to do that. We're going to go to teachers. So if you click right here where it says log in, and then we're going to see two sides. We've got a teacher side and a student side. Again, we are not going to the student side. Okay, you guys are going to be the teachers in charge. So we're going to go to teachers and go log in with Google. Now, once you hit log in with Google, it's also going to ask you to check a box that says, are you 13 or over? Go ahead and click that box. That way it actually gives you access to the teacher side of things. Now we are actually in the Nearpod dashboard. So this is where uh, you can take projects that you've made in Google Slides and spice them up, or you can take projects that you're making straight in Nearpod and make them even cooler. Uh, so we're gonna go through both of those steps today. Um, I'm gonna show you both options. So we're gonna start by going to Create, and we're gonna click Create Lesson. Once you've clicked Create Lesson, you have some options here. We've got Add Content or Upload Files. And then we want to be sure that we give our project a title. So I'm going to name this Circulatory System. 
And then I actually have a really good circulatory system, uh, Google Slides. I'm just going to pull that into this and try to make it cooler. So we'll hit Upload Files. And then we're going to click Drive. And it's going to connect us to our Google Drive. And I'm going to type in Circulatory System. And there's my Google Slides. So I'll click that. And then I will hit Select. Okay, give your project time to load in, and then uh, we'll go through how to add activities. So right here are all of my slides for my Google Slides project that I've already made. So I wanna add some cool stuff to it to make it more fun to present to other people. So I'm gonna hit Add Content and Activities. For the content section, we've got all different stuff that we can choose from. Uh, you can explore any of these that you want. I'm going to take us over to the Flowcabulary video, but there's also regular videos, web content, VR simulators, 3D things. So I picked Flowcabulary, and then you're just going to search what you want to look for. I search Circulatory, and then I'm going to click Add. So then whenever you add it, it actually puts it at the bottom of your presentation, but I might not want it there. So if you click and hold, you can drag it to wherever you feel like it fits best. So maybe I want to go over these three slides and then let's listen to a vocabulary. So next, let's add another thing. Let's go to activities this time. So here we've got this thing called time to climb. We've got questions, matching pairs. I think I'm going to do a quiz. So I click quiz and then I typed in my question, what is the main organ of the circulatory system? And then I'm given the people that's going to watch my presentation, I'm giving them two options. So um, heart is the correct answer, so I'm going to check this box. That way when these people answer this question, they'll know if they got it right or not. And then you'll hit save. Okay, so now I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom. I've got my quiz right here. Um, I almost like where that is, but I'm going to move it to this spot instead. So basically what I've done is I've taken a regular Google Slides presentation and I've added a couple activities in here that will make it slightly more engaging for the people that I'm showing it off to. So whenever you make your Google Slides projects, it might get a little boring or a little dry sometimes. These are just some ways that you can spice it up a little bit. Uh, once you've got everything in there that you want, you'll hit save and exit. And then you'll see your new, your new project right here on your dashboard. When you're ready to present it to other people, if you hover over, you see live participation. The same thing that your teacher does when they give you a Nearpod, um, you'll have a code generated that you can share with the people that you're going to share your project to, and then they can follow along with your Nearpod. So now let's go through how to make one from scratch just in Nearpod. We're going to go back to Create and click Lesson. And again, we're back to this screen here. Be sure that you title it. Except this time we're not going to upload files, we're just going to go straight to add content. Here you can add slides, you can add other slides, videos, more FET simulations, a picture slideshow if you have one, just some audio. So look through these and figure out what you would like to add to your personalized Nearpod. Okay, so I've added a 3D Nearpod, another flow vocabulary, and then I also added a matching vocabulary um, game. And then you'll hit again, save and exit. All right, and then there is our second presentation. Now let's say you're not sure if you like the full presentation. You can go here to edit and change things up, or you can go preview and see what it looks like. Let's go preview. Once it loads here, you'll actually be able to see all the pieces of your presentation and decide what you might want to change. So here's the 3D part of Nearpod. They have lots of other cool ones to choose from. Then when I click next, it'll take me straight to my vocabulary. And then here is my matching. All right, I hope you enjoyed this very quick demonstration on how to use Nearpod to make your Google Slides even cooler before you share them with your peers or to make something totally from scratch in this awesome website. Thank you.
So hopefully now that you've watched the step-by-step -step tutorial, you've got some amazing ideas that you want to do with your presentations. Um, and so we just want to tell you, have fun. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can always email myself. My email is C Lily L I L L Y 001 at g.orycountyschools.net or you can email Miss Buckley at B Buckley B U C K L E Y at g.orycountyschools.net or you can just go to nearpod.com and they've got and up in the search bar just put tutorials and they've got a bunch of things up there to explore. So have fun nearpodizing your presentations. And thanks again for attending. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos, or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources like this cast podcast and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Deer Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog.